I've done a lot of testing of 3-inch motor and propeller combinations that we've gone through together. And last year I used that data to both upgrade and redesign a few 3-inch builds that I've been extremely happy with flying. But I'm always looking for even better component combinations and technological improvements to iteratively make things better every year. In recent testing we proved that with the right motor and propeller selection, 3.5-inch propellers can provide greater thrust and efficiency over 3-inch without any additional motor and propeller weight. So making use of that data, I've moved ahead and built a 3.5-inch 120 FPS high definition FPV quadcopter to achieve an even higher sub 250 gram thrust to weight ratio and improve flight efficiency. And oh man, is it fun to fly. I would love to share it with you. Recursion Labs. For science. During the conclusion of testing 3.5-inch propellers on 1404 motors, I said the goal in building a perfect upgrade would be to take an existing 3-inch build and just extend the arms. Unfortunately, neither frame existed, so I looked for one that was near equivalent that could tightly fit all the components without extra space taking up weight. There are not a lot of options here, but I found the Happy Model Crux 35 frame that seemed like it might meet the need, and I'll say up front that it has some flaws, including one significant one that I'll go over, but I've worked to mitigate most of them. Without any of the TPU, the Crux 35 weighs in at only 22.9 grams, which is actually lighter than my 3 inch frames. The design is extremely minimalist, which I like, but that posed two challenges for the build. The first was the space for the GHF 420 AIO flight controller. I prefer to mount the board with the power cables coming up the rear, but there was not enough clearance from the posts. I managed to mount it the other way, which actually works perfectly fine. The second challenge was the camera size, only supporting 14mm nano size cameras instead of the 19mm required for the Cadex Nebula Pro I've been using. Lucky for me, around the same time the Cadex Nebula Nano Pro was released, which fits perfectly, weighs less, and is a full featured camera supporting 120 frames per second, and an image that is surprisingly good. One thing I love is the minimalist top plate that comes with 20x20 20 20 mounting holes, so I can mount the flight controller at the bottom and a naked Cadex Vista at the top. This means when I need to get at the flight controller or replace the bottom carbon, I don't have to take the Vista stack apart and risk damaging it. The propulsion equipment chosen were the top performing T-Motor 1404 motors paired with the HQ Prop 3 blade 2 inch pitch polycarbonate propellers. I opted not to go for a larger 1408 motor since to me the extra motor and battery weight wasn't worth the added thrust, agility loss, and reduced crash resistance on the frame. Lighter is better here. I've linked the relevant video covering the performance and efficiency data for this motor and propeller combination in the video description. With the build complete, it was time to see the dry weight, and it weighed in at an impressive 99.5 grams. I did a bunch of comparative flight testing and tuning to try and find the right battery size, and settled on a 4S 550 to 650 milliamp hour battery to be perfect for fairly aggressive flying. With the beta flight VBAT SAG compensation feature enabled, which reduces the top end slightly to keep the stick feel the same across the wide voltage range. With this feature disabled, you would probably want a 750 milliamp hour battery if you plan to actually use that top end, but you probably don't need it on this build. Doing some basic performance calculations, with the VBAT SAG compensation enabled, and assuming that reduces thrust by 15%, on a 750 size 4S battery, we get a thrust to weight ratio of 8.34. On a 650 sized, we get 8.59. And on a 550 size, it increases all the way to 9.55. I tuned the craft on a cold windy day, and with the default Betaflight 4.3 configuration, it flew terribly, where we get oscillations when increasing the throttle like the pids were too high. Reducing the filtering here is what helped, and if you don't know how to do that, the official preset for 4.3 filter settings for clean build with RPM filtering looks about right. Outside of that, setting the dynamic idle value to 40, throttle boost to 5, and thrust linearization to 50% made the quad fly amazing, where I would say it's 80% tuned and probably good enough for most people, but bumping the eye gain and master multiplier made things a bit more locked in to the set point. Being able to attach a GPS can sometimes allow you to venture to places you might not normally go, so I added a connector at the back to optionally mount a GPS so that GPS rescue can be used for 5.8 grams of additional weight, which can be saved when I don't need it. With things tuned, it was time to fly. It's still cold, I'm not used to the quad, and I'm rusty from the winter break, but the thing is extremely fun to fly and has a ridiculous amount amount of power, response, and agility. But how fast does it go? With 650 milliamp hour batteries, I repeated two second full throttle bursts and measured the top speed to be around 160 to 200 kilometers per hour, which is around 100 to 120 miles per hour. On the 550 milliamp hour battery, it sagged below 14 volts near the end of a burst, so that gives you an idea of how much full throttle it can sustain. Flight testing a 750, 650, and 550 milliamp hour battery, each drop does give a noticeably lighter and more agile feel to the flight performance, especially when 
moving to 550. 550 milliamp hour batteries feel really good if you can get away with it. And on a flight where I did two, two to three second full throttle bursts and some aggressive flying scene here, I got four minutes of total flight time landing with more than 100 milliamp hours left in the battery. And it only dropped below 14 volts on hard maneuvers at the end of that time and during the full throttle bursts. To get an additional non-scientific sense of the flight times, I lightly cruised around casually with frequent turns until it started to regularly dip below 3.5 volts per cell. And on 550 size batteries, I got 7 minutes and 32 seconds. On 650 size batteries, I got 8 minutes and 13 seconds. And on 750 size batteries, I got 9 minutes and 11 seconds, which roughly equates to a 1 minute separation. That makes sense when you consider it requires less power to fly a smaller and lighter battery. All batteries had a resting voltage of 3.7 volts. I did bash this thing around a bit, but after a fairly light crash into a tree, I rearmed and flew again. I noticed at some point after I was getting some mid-throttle fast oscillations, sometimes quite severe. Checking the props and motors, everything looked okay. Since I was in the middle of tuning, I assumed I did something wrong and actually managed to tune it out a bit. When checking black box, I quickly realized that it had to be a hardware issue and eventually discovered a crack in the arm that caused it to flex really easily and identified a major design flaw that should have been obvious. I am impressed Betaflight handled it as well as it did. It looks like Happy Model added an optional screw hole in the middle of all the arm struts, but in the back, it's so thin that it makes it a significant weak point. If it wasn't for this fairly big design flaw, I would say this frame is extremely good, but this does significantly take away from that. Luckily, the bottom plates are quite cheap, but this hole really needs to be removed in future cuts. Or, I might eventually look for another frame if this happens a lot, especially if they break faster than propellers. That's all for now. With this build out of the way, I'll be testing 4-inch and 5-inch propellers and motors to see how much more ridiculous thrust to weight we can get on a sub 250 gram build, especially if we can beat that and increase the efficiency at the same time. More to come.